Oh, there they are. Coming back. It's still alive. It's a good sign. Huh? Probably about seven, eight, nine hundred of them. There's lots, there's still more coming. Around here, out in the boonies, I've seen some incredible amounts of these beautiful animals actually they really are beautiful animals mean as hell when they land boy they're mean <laughs> don't go too close to them any more of them yeah there's more there actually hey welcome everyone bruce wards here from montreal quebec this is the moon did you know <laughs> uh filmed on march 13th Yesterday, in the middle of the afternoon, didn't get any with the telescope. I haven't gotten it in a while. I'm looking forward to getting it. Speaking of objects in space, how about the sun? We're going to see it both um, yesterday's sun and do a comparison with today's sun. Yesterday, windy as hell, excuse the expression. Sometimes it's really hard to be able to get a shot of the sun. But, of course, a CME directed to Earth on its way would have either hit yesterday or hit today. Who knows? I haven't checked yet to see if it did. Most likely it did. Top right there, plasma lifting up. Uh, very large sunspots, again, facing Earth. So this is um, March 13th, yesterday. And we're not too long. We'll see and jump right into March 14th, which was... Today, this morning, again, a very windy day. Thanks for watching, everyone. Telephone wire is what you're seeing that's passing in front of the sun there. Sorry about that. An unexpected eruption from an otherwise unimpressive sunspot region. Imagine the solar flare lasted for hours and launched an asymmetrical full halo coronal mass ejection into space. Most of the ejecta is heading northwest, but a significant part of the plasma cloud is expected to, uh, for arrival at our planet. The coronal mass ejection was launched at a speed of about 600 kilometers per second, which is a fairly average speed. This puts the likely arrival time at Earth late on Sunday, uh, March 13th, they say. So, geomagnetic storm, uh, we would have um, received it yesterday, maybe a couple hours ago, March 13th. So we see it, it's similar to yesterday's sun. This is the 14th, still raging. Each of the areas are raging. The one on the left there, about to begin, top plasma. You can see on the top right there, some 
spots that are there. Well, that's the plasma lifting up and this big spot in the center. The one off to the right is honestly fairly large. So this is, again, after we received that coronal mass ejection and geomagnetic storm, which would have been yesterday. Um, this is the sun today. What happens if all that line and uh, they merge and become one big spot? Well, that's where it gets dangerous for solar eruptions. And I tend to think that we're not even seeing half of maybe not even a quarter of what is about to come in the following months or years because they say leading up to 2025 of course that the sun's going to get a lot worse we know that it's going to interact with the atmosphere and chemistry of the atmosphere of our earth itself and of course weather it's going to be crazy here as we have been seeing um, I did some more tests, zoomed in really close with the camera, uh, several um, millimeters out, probably about 16, mil, 100 millimeters out, maybe only 1,500 millimeters out. Because, of course, when you grab the P900 and you zoom in to the whole um, sun, well, it's going to have a hard time to focus. Of course, you could do it many ways. You can manual focus it. It's just I didn't have the time to do so. Out in the wind, I had to slow it down. Sometimes there's clouds, but here, even though there's a little bit of clouds, you can really see a good sun. It took me a while to get it this morning because it was really windy, extremely windy here. And this is before it's even under the wires. I had to get it very early because already they're announcing snow, but I, I don't know. I, we haven't seen it yet. Maybe it's tonight they could be announcing it. It could be after the radiation that we just had, of course. So this is uh, close up. A bit closer and of course uh, filmed with the camera closer there's uh, a limit a limit of course of how close we can get but we can still get close enough to see if there's any big um, CME right now for example we would see it very well we would be able to see it very well that's an impressive one on the right again facing earth and they're not small so the region yesterday that caused the CME and geomagnetic storm to come to Earth, guys, very concerning, it was a small area. Imagine what that means. So that means it doesn't have to be a gigantic sunspot to send, um, you know, a strong uh, cloud of plasma into space, a 600 kilometers per second. Oof, regular speed, usually. So... So now this is close up. We're looking at the solar flaring and the sunspots on the surface. I hope you enjoy. They also say that some plasma, when ejected, can remain in the orbit of the sun. And sometimes, some of the objects that I see around the sun, if not UFOs or meteors or asteroids, could be leftover plasma for sure as it hardens and remains and becomes a rock. I'm going to show you an example here of something incredible, of course, re recently going by uh, the sun. It looks like two objects that could be possibly inside of this light that is combusting, burning, whatever you want to call it, maybe interacting with the atmosphere. Doesn't matter. 
Disclosure's coming soon. 